At long last, we have a press conference coming from one of the big three console manufacturers to go over today. And that is talking about all the upcoming games that were shown in last week's Xbox Game Showcase, including the first-party titles and third-party console launch exclusive partners. Xbox team made it clear that every game shown in the presentation will be available day one on Xbox Game Pass, console, PC, and Xbox's new xCloud streaming platform day one. Now, without further ado, let us begin the Xbox Game Showcase breakdown. In Halo Infinite. Well, Halo Infinite is easily the most anticipated game of the year coming from Microsoft. Well, Halo Infinite easily the most anticipated game of the year coming from Xbox. And the first game that they really showed really didn't sell the next-gen experience. However, the gameplay seems really good from the 8-minute gameplay demo and the separate 1-minute gameplay teaser that showed enhanced visuals and additional guns and equipment from the 4-month-old demo that was confirmed from Microsoft. Looking forward to multiplayer demonstration because Halo is mainly known for its arena shooter but not convinced that the visuals will change too much within the next four or five months. State of Decay 3. Undead Lab's next installment in the State of Decay franchise with zero gameplay was shown off with only the addition that we know that zombie animals will be, will be apparent in the game and that scenery is going to be focused on wilderness and winter. Not much else to give from the trailer, but it really has a sharp visual improvement. The wilderness vibe from the trailer gives me a lot of hope. But soon we have to see more gameplay footage of this because the other two games' art styles have, haven't really aged over the years. Forza Motorsport. As an action Forza game, have gone through given lackluster performance from Halo Infinite. Looks pretty on par with Sony's Gran Turismo 7 visuals, but didn't show gameplay, just in-engine rendering. A racing game should be fine, and Turn 10 is capable of taking full advantage of consoles they have worked on in the past. Everwild. Rare's intriguing new IP gives me Avatar The Last Ender vibes. But instead of the four elements you control, it's the animals and ecosystem. Still, little to nothing is known about the gameplay or plot, just world building. And that's pretty neat, but it's, it's not something that captures a lot of interest for me particularly yet. Tell us why. Dot Nod's next narrative focus experience is pretty niche, and it doesn't have a good track record in the games industry. At least for this game, Tell Us Why is a th segmented into three parts, each releasing one week apart from each other. Sorry, on August 27th. So unlike other games in the genre, this one's going to be a quicker release format. There isn't much to look forward to other than the game's mystery in Alaska, which doesn't have that many games set in a harsh, remote U.S. state. Ori and Will of the Wisps port. Other than receiving a performance boost, there is literally nothing else being added. When the game first launched on all Xbox One platforms, it had performance problems that hopefully the Xbox Series X will solve, will resolve and enhance its current aesthetic. But yet, nothing that remains to be seen with this game. The Outer Worlds, Peril on Gorgon. The first of the two plan expansions to the Outer Worlds will add two. The first of the two plan expansions to the Outer Worlds will add new weapons, perks, and drawbacks, and a new level cap made possible to the success of the game. And since it's coming pretty soon, gives us something to do while we wait for the next holiday season, regardless of which platform preference. Grounded, Obsidian second game that they showed, and it's actually available now as an early access title with very little to offer as of right now, with limited story content and big performance issues on PC as of recording this right now. The trailer had the most appeal, poking fun of itself, being a premise to a co-op survival game. Feels like I can't recommend this game to anyone afraid of bugs as it would be the main enemies you encounter. But as an early access game, we had to wait a while before we get some real content to test out. Obsidian's final game that they showed is on the surface, Obsidian's attempt at a, of the Scrolls game, using the lore of the Pillars of Eternity franchise, it's definitely something I'm going to keep under my radar and excited to see more of this game, especially after some of the leaks that were shown on Twitter that seem to be confirmed as of right now. It definitely appears to be ambitious and given Obsidian's full use of resources, give them the potential of making something really great. As Dusk Falls, another narrative focused game with a unique art style that doesn't catch my eye whatsoever because it doesn't seem like character control interaction is given to the player as it seems very limited to the character choice dialogue. Visually, though, it seems pretty sharp, and hopefully the studio can start off on a good note. Psychonauts 2. Double Fine's last multi-platform release for the foreseeable future delivers a very hippie 70s vibe that again looks smooth, but not next-gen. However, recent discussions with Double Fine's new ownership let us know that the development team was low on finances, even to the point where they had to cut various bosses in the game. So after they can finish the project, I wonder how much better the game will be 
with the inclusion of bosses and extra development time they have now. But we only have one more year to wait till then. Destiny 2 Beyond Light. Surprisingly, one of the most graphically impressive games that they showed in the live stream that is actually debunking Halo Infinite's cross-gen demo reel excuse of having poor graphics quality. What is better than the graphics they showed off was the all Destiny 2 expansions and upcoming expansions will be part of Xbox Game Pass going forward with no info on exclusive content for any particular platform like Destiny's had over the years. Stalker 2 A surprise new entry in the Stalker series given that the last game was delivered back in 2009 with only Cross-Sex being the only other title they have worked on in the, in the years bef between those two. A surprise new entry in Stalker series, given that the last game was delivered back in 2009, being the only other title they have worked on, Cross-Sex 3, doesn't give me much hope for this title. All their games have, well, have not been well received in the eyes of the critics, although the fact they are making a sequel to this game after 11 years proves to me that they could potentially bring back the series, as from the trailer it looks pretty interesting and the information of the game being open world. It definitely is going to be kept under my radar going forward. Warhammer 40k Dark Tide, Warhammer Vermintide and Vermintide 2. The game will appear to be similar to Left 4 Dead. Shows real promise in the game's potential success and being familiar with the long and expensive franchise that is Warhammer. Although like many other other titles shown last week, there needs to be more actual gameplay shown before being excited for this particular game. But almost all the games are fun with friends and I imagine this one would be no different. Tetris Effect Connected. Now finally bringing in a Tetris Effect port to Xbox and bringing in new game modes with the focus of being multiplayer this time around. It's Tetris with good reactive music and I can't wait to jump into the multiplayer experience that they have planned for this Tetris that they have planned for this Tetris game. Sign me right up. The Gunk. Another brand new title that is eye catching in the visuals department, but apparently the game is very graphics demanding according to the publisher CEO at the time. At the time will tell if there are any potential changes as this game is very different from its recent titles. From this one being a 3D environment rather than a 2D one. But I definitely have my hopes for this one. The Medium. Easily the most impressive game that was shown in the showcase. Even though the trailer in the live stream didn't give them justice. The actual gameplay demonstration that was sent to their, your own personal YouTube channel is much better. That shows how the dual reality experience will function. Will show how their dual reality experience will function. I have no idea as to why the game is currently listed on Xbox One Store when the trailer didn't show it and the minimum PC specs that they're really demanding for the dual reality being the core game mechanic. Which reminds me of Halo 1 and Halo 2's anniversary graphics swapping on the fly. Can't wait for this game to drop when I can play this game on Xbox Game Pass Holiday 2020. Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis The next gen Fantasy Star experience ditching their 10 plus year old engine that will bring your character visuals primarily from the original PSO2 into the new game without paying at any without paying any additional cost. They have stated that PSO2 development will still continue, so now there will be two different Fantasy Star gameplay experiences available to the player at their leisure. Crossfire X campaign. While Remedy is working on a single player experience for Crossfire X, the core gameplay is not smooth. I actually joined in the uh, beta for Crossfire X, and the gameplay was really rough in regards to aiming and player progression and passive stat bonuses. Smilegate's next Crossfire installment coming to Xbox first doesn't seem like a promising future unless the developers take time, real time, into improving their core mechanics in the game before it even launches in their Asia market. Improving the core mechanics in the game before it launches even in the Asia market loves their version of Counter-Strike. Smilegate's next Crossfire installment coming to Xbox first doesn't look like a promising future, even for the people who loved that series back in 2007 when it first launched. But given this remedy, I'm, I'm assuming the campaign would be pretty good. So far, according to the rumors about Perfect Dark and Fable reboots appear to be really promising, but nothing has shown that the gameplay or the mechanics of the series is known for. Simply acknowledging that the next Fable game is being made is not enough in this day and age to build hype because we need actual gameplay and extended talks from the developers and their goals for this game's development. Although, this game definitely has a high bar set with this game going forward. Conclusion a lot of Sony games that they showed off are actually coming out within the next year, whereas a lot of the games coming from Xbox's showcase l are coming much later in the development cycle. Sadly, overall, Xbox Game Showcase is a big letdown compared to Sony's presentation in a lot of ways, one of which is that a lot of the Sony games that they showed off are coming within the next year, whereas a lot of games coming from Microsoft Showcase are not coming until two or plus years. Xbox's show lacked a lot of games with gameplay and are also coming out within reasonable time. 
even when Sony's games are lacking in the gameplay or performance department with a low frame rate, Sony still has a better lineup going forward as of right now. Second, most of Microsoft's true first party title games are were underwhelming and left me demanding more gameplay footage, at least for me personally. Lastly, rather than focusing on old or new Xbox consoles, their focus is leaning more towards PC than anything else. Although with their recent announcement of their Xbox streaming service xCloud is coming to Xbox Game Pass Ultimate at no extra cost, which proves that Microsoft has the best deal in gaming right now, period. There is no contest. And that should be the cost of celebration rather than a total disappointment. I really want to see more from both Sony and Microsoft in regards to their consoles being released so soon. Once again, the real winner of these presentations are PC. This has been Adolfo from Chuck Light Media. Go ahead and give it a like and subscribe for more upcoming content each week. Plasma turrets and aircraft. Powerful new human and alien weapons. A single player campaign spanning 10 massive indoor and outdoor environments. And support for intense multiplayer battles with up to 16 of your friends or enemies. All that wrapped up in an epic sci-fi story that's so freaky. Whoa, it makes me shake just thinking about it. Halo, Combat Evolved, buy one, heck, buy two. That's an order, soldier.